Welcome back to the Justice Factor. On 11 July 1963, Ahmed Kalfrada was arrested at the South African internal headquarters of Umkonto Wesizwe, the military wing of the ANC in Rivonia, outside Joburg. He became one of the accused in the infamous Rivonia trial, which started in October 1963. He was charged with sabotage and attempting to overthrow the government by violent means. The trial ended in 1964. Kafrada was sentenced to life imprisonment along with Nelson Mandela, Walter Sisulu, Governor Mbeki, Andrew Mlange, and Billy Naya, Elias Mutualedi, and Dennis Goldberg. I continued my conversation with Ahmed Kafrada about reconciliation and leadership. When I look at that transition and what you point out now, I look at an incident like Marikana and I, I, I wonder whether there isn't something happening in the 20 years of democracy that that you know you had such a big hand in delivering that we are building now that something is not shaking at the foundations well the whole matter is under investigation by this commission mm. on the face of it uh, you know any death at the hands of police uh, already creates suspicion mm. right from the start we need to have the commission reporting, and then we can, uh, you know, we can come to more serious conclusions. On the face of it, with the media coverage and so forth, on the face of it, the police are in the wrong. We don't know. We don't know what the commission is going to come out with. Uh, it may be that they were provoked. We don't know, uh, and we can't go by just the media coverage of of that event. But whatever it was, any death is one death too many. It's been 50 years since the Rivonia trial. You've spoken about the policy of the ANCA, United Non-Racial Democratic South Africa. We done pretty okay on the democratic and so forth. Are we, is the non-racial project on track? And I, I, I refer specifically to this election. I've had people, uh, one of the people who held your hand as you walked out of uh, Paul Small prison, um, Cyril Ramaphosa, uh, utterances like, the Boers will return if you don't vote for the ANC. Is that, is the non-racial project on track? Yes and no. In practice, I think we've made headway. The rector of just about every university is black. Almost every university, if not all universities, are mixed now, mm. uh, and in some of them, I should say the black, and when I use black in a more general terms, mm. the majority are, are black. Uh, integration at school level is much slower, but it, it's, it's going on. Uh, take a place like Lenasia, which was primarily an Indian group area. Mm. Today, every school is no longer an Indian school. Uh, so if you take one little example uh, of Lenasia, I mean, that I can speak from personal experience. Mm -hmm. So slowly it is moving on, but again we hop back to 20 years. And 20 years in the life of an individual is a long time. Mm -hmm. But in the life of a nation, 20 years is a very short space. Let's move on to, uh, you've started a foundation now, I was, uh, I was charmed by, I went to see um, the movie uh, Mandela, Long Walk to Freedom, and, and you're, you're played by a comedian in it, um, and, and a very fine role you played. How are we doing in terms of preserving memory of the struggle against apartheid and, and, and the people who played a role in it? I think that Long Walk to Freedom is one, quite an important uh, representation of, uh, of the book. Uh, I think it does very well, but that's not enough. A lot more has to be done to represent that, that, the, the struggle itself. The book by Madiba is just one of many other things that, that we have to uh, investigate and bring to the attention of the people. Um, when, when, I look at, when I look at that uh, movie and, and how you're depicted and Nelson Mandela and, and all your other comrades, I'm struck by the level of leadership that you all displayed. Um, are you, 
without commenting on your predecessors in the African National Congress, are you happy with the level of leadership in South Africa in general, in business, in labor, in government? You know, my view towards this is that uh, I concentrate on the policy. Mm. Individual will come and go. Mm. Uh, that's history. I'll be very worried when there's a move away from the fundamental policy of the ANC and of the constitution of the country. I don't concentrate on individuals. I've got views, of course, but uh, as I say, individuals come and go. But don't you think some, some individuals may drive uh, policy uh, that you may hold dear to the periphery and new policy. Um, and I speak as a journalist concerned about, for example, freedom of speech and the protection of state information bill, uh, for, for instance. Well, there has been, uh, I mean, this very foundation, Mandela Foundation, has taken up that issue as well. Anything that smacks of interference with the freedom of speech uh, is, is uh, very serious and it should be dealt with. Any intrusion on the freedom of speech should be, should be attended to. And there are these dangers, there's this uh, law before Parliament, which uh, is serious, mm. and it should be dealt with, it should be amended to, to, to guard the freedom of speech. Mm. Tell us a bit about your foundation. What do you want to achieve with it? Well, you know, in one sentence, it's a deepening non-racialism. We have made progress. We are continuing to make progress. Our biggest challenge is ignorance, particularly among young people. They don't know where we come from. We try to reach out to young people to impress upon them that with freedom comes responsibility. They have every avenue now open, which was closed before. They have a responsibility to themselves, to their parents, and importantly, to the country. So they have to take account of the holistic picture. What is their role? Uh, we are short in every skill that you can think of. They must take advantage of that, but never forget the responsibilities because we are committed to this one non-racial country. So a lot of work has, been done, has to be done, particularly among young people who constitute the majority of our country. So we try to reach out uh, with the little capacity that we have to reach out to young people with this message. We are making slow progress, reaching out to more and more people. After the break, we continue our conversation with ANC veteran Ahmed Kafrada. News that moves. ENCA.com.